Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright folks, so this viral article from the New York Times is obviously something that we gotta cover, but also I wanna preface the video by saying that I'm not jumping the gun and giving them credit for anything, at least not just yet. A lot of people think that we might be going through an introspective moment within the mainstream media where they're finally realizing, finally waking up to their awful, misleading, frankly evil ways, and they're asking for forgiveness and looking for redemption. And on that notion, I think I'm going to say maybe calm your horses a little bit. I wouldn't go that far just yet, but I do think it's kind of interesting and maybe there's a little bit of credit to give as a couple major mainstream journalists, or it's hard to call them journalists, let's just call them mainstream media figures, seem to be admitting the truth that we have been highlighting for years. That they're biased, they're partisan, they're arrogant, demeaning, condescending, and most importantly, that their behavior when it comes to their journalism practices is is actually destructive and that maybe Donald Trump wasn't actually the divisive force that fractured America and maybe it was them and their visceral highly emotional reaction to the man who came into the political world and challenged them for the first time in a long time and so these are some of the concepts that we're going to talk about in this video but of course we're going to start off with this new New York Times opinion piece titled I was wrong let me show you guys exactly what's going on here so let's roll the tape all right friends the new pin tweet on New York Times opinion says our columnists did their research they read watched talked to the experts they formed an opinion and wrote about it they were wrong and they're telling you why and the one that's getting the most attention is this one I was wrong about Trump supporters Brett Stevens writes the worst line I ever wrote as a pundit yes I know it's a crowded field was the first line I ever wrote about the man who would become the 45th president of the United States if by now you don't find Donald Trump appalling you're appalling this opening salvo from August 2015 15, was the first in what would become dozens of columns denouncing Trump as a unique threat to American life, democratic ideals, and the world itself. I regret almost nothing of what I said about the man and his close minions, but the broad swipe at his voters caricatured them and blinkered me. It probably also did more to help than hinder Trump's candidacy. Telling voters they are moral ignoramuses is a bad way of getting them to change their minds. What were they seeing that I wasn't? That ought to have been the first question I asked myself. When I looked at Trump, I saw a bigoted blowhard making one ignorant argument after another. What Trump's supporters saw was a candidate whose entire being was a proudly raised middle finger at the self-satisfied elite that had produced a failing status quo. I was blind to this, though I had spent the years of Barack Obama's presidency denouncing his policies. My objections were more abstract than personal. I belonged to a social class that my friend Peggy Noonan called the protected. My family lived in a safe, pleasant neighborhood. Our kids went to an excellent public school. I was well paid, fully insured, insulated against life's harsh edges. Trump's appeal, according to Noonan, was largely to people she called the, quote, unprotected. Their neighborhoods weren't so safe and pleasant. Their schools weren't so excellent. Their livelihoods weren't so secure. Their experience of America was often one of cultural and economic decline, sometimes felt in the most personal of ways. It was an experience compounded by the insult of being treated as losers and racists, clinging in Obama's notorious 2008 phrase to guns or religion or apathy towards people who aren't like them. No wonder they were angry. And so you can see why I'm a little bit reluctant to give them full credit. Now the general point that he's making, I totally agree with these mainstream elitists looking down at Trump supporters. It's probably one of their worst features. I mean, Hillary Clinton calling Trump supporters the quote, basket of deplorables was one of the nails in the coffin of her campaign. And so at least they're slowly realizing it. They're slowly realizing how cringe and out of touch they are with basic Americans. You know, people who don't have fancy jobs and sky high buildings in the middle of New York City. People People who may not have some fancy, really important job title, but nonetheless, people whose voices should matter. People who should be respected, regardless of any of the pretentious, superficial nonsense that liberals seem to care about. Although probably not a fair way to describe it because Brett Stevens is in fact a conservative journalist. He's a rhino, a never-Trump, or whatever you want to call him, a neocon. So I guess not exactly liberals, but more so these elitist big city types. At least some of them are coming to the realization that their tactics are incredibly destructive and divisive, and that calling your opponents backward bigots, extremists, or racists, or whatever you want to call it, calling them fools, or whatever it is, isn't exactly a great strategy to win elections, or for your ideas to win in the marketplace of debate and discussion. But another great admission, especially because it's coming from 
from the New York Times, thanks to Mr. Brett Stevens, is him openly admitting, under the banner of the New York Times, that the whole Russia collusion narrative throughout Donald Trump's presidency was bogus. For every in-your-face MAGA warrior, there were plenty of ambivalent Trump supporters, doubtful of his ability and dismayed by his manner, who were willing to take their chances on him because he had the nerve to defy deeply flawed conventional pieties. Nor were they oppressed by Trump's critics, who had their own penchant for hypocrisy and outright slander. To this day, precious few anti-Trumpers have been honest with themselves about the elaborate hoax, there just is no other word for it, that was the Steele dossier and all the bogus allegations credulously parroted in the mainstream media that flowed from it. And so we just got an admission from the mainstream media, from the New York Times, something that passed editorial and was actually released as public, that the Steele dossier or Obamagate or Hillary's Russiagate was in fact a hoax. Like I told you guys, reluctant to give them credit, but at least it's a move in the right direction. The New York Times may be having a moment of introspection, realizing that they're out of touch condescending elitists who push fake news. I'll put that one in the W column, because it's a perfect description. It's just the reality, and it seems to be something that the mainstream media is slowly starting to realize. I mean, how could you not realize? Trust in the mainstream media is at an all-time low. And here's actually another viral introspective moment from a mainstream media figure. There was just a Gallup poll out today that shows that the trust in, in media, newspapers and television is you know, hitting an all-time low. People don't trust us, they don't believe us, and it makes me wonder if this job, as I'm currently doing it, is effective, uh, but if it's doing more harm than good. I don't have a good answer for that. Yes, you are causing damage. You're doing a whole lot more damage than you are good. We continuously see these mainstream figures and left-wing figures try to demonize the right, but the only reason the right or even the left are acting in the way that they are is because of you. It falls directly on your lap. The reason people are losing faith in elections, losing faith in the government, government agencies, and basic narratives is because you constantly lie, you constantly attack and slander. I mean, look at all you media liars pushing all of this garbage through Nancy Pelosi and Liz Cheney's January 6th sham hearing while Americans are suffering through a failed presidency and harsh economic times. No wonder nobody trusts you. And you are causing damage. All of the damage that you claim Donald Trump has caused or would have caused is actually you. It was actually projection the entire time. It's you. You know, the classic meme. Are we the baddies? Yes, you are the baddies. And at least some, even though it's an extremely slim minority, it's maybe just a couple of journalists, at least some are finally waking up to it, asking themselves the right questions. And hopefully, this starts to become a trend and more people wake up to the destructive nature of the fake news media. It's not just a meme. It's not Donald Trump attacking the free press. Oh, he's a dictator, blah, blah, blah. No, he's right. And it's another reason why people voted for him. Wake up, you big city elite elitists and realize what's going on. That's what I got for you guys. If you enjoyed the video, then please make sure to leave a like. I'm going to get back to work. I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.